months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. Uh, the amount of work you've gone through is tremendous. I mean, all your notes here, you go through, as I understand it, you watch the tape, you take it all in, and then, because and the, the tapes are like an hour, half hour? How 30 long? minutes. 30 minutes? 29 minutes. And then to distill all that down to these, to these notes, it's a lot of work, and we really appreciate it. So uh, who have you got for us today? Today we have William Selby, or Bill Selby. Uh, Bill Selby's grandparents uh, were married shortly after the Civil War. And his grandfather uh, eventually got a, a law degree and he practiced law in Kansas um, and in Michigan. Uh, they made a living uh, from farming in West Kansas and it was very difficult to farm in West Kansas because there's not much there. So, so they, they weren't making much money farming and there wasn't much lawyer work either in West Kansas. So they, they, moved, out to, uh, they moved out to Ventura um, by a railroad. They, uh, they sent a rent representative first to, to find a good place. And uh, the reason why they picked Ventura, because at that time, that's where the railroad stopped and it didn't go any further. So hence that's, and so uh, the representative went back, got the Selby family and they came out. Uh, Bill's grandfather uh, practiced law and they, uh, like everybody else, they rented a couple boxcars and a coach car and traveled by rail all the way to Ventura. So you guys, I, I've wondered in the stories you've told, when you talk about everybody, I always wonder why Ventura. Now you've answered that. That's what, that was a, the terminus of the, of the rail. Of the rail. Plus, it's Ventura. 1860s, approximately the time. What a great place in the, in the Civil War. What a great place to end up. So who have we got today? William Selby. We're going to spend some time with Bill Selby this evening. Now, Bill's family came here a hundred years ago, and we're going to talk a little history in Old Ventura. And Bill, good to see you. Good to see you. Bill Selby, attorney at law. You're not retired either. You both. I'm about halfway retired. All right. You open a uh, new office? No, I no. to a new office. I've got the same office I've had for eight or ten years. Have you? Bill, when did your family come to Ventura? Oh, well, I wasn't here at the time, but it was about a hundred years ago. That <laughs> <laughs> was before I got here. <laughs> so, and that, that was uh, Grandpa. My grandfather and my grandmother came. Where'd they come from, Bill? They came from Kansas at the time. They were married in Iowa. Sometime shortly after the Civil War, and my grandfather went to law school at Michigan, and then he went out to Kansas and started practicing law in western Kansas. And a man by the name of Barnes, and he had a law office there. And they had, my father was born there, and his older sister, I think two sisters were born there. So I think they had a family of maybe three when they came here. Yeah. 
What year did they get to Ventura? Again, I was working by yes because I'd say it was about 1888 or thereabouts, maybe a little, give, give or take a year. Came by train? Came by train. They had sent, there were, things were pretty tough back there in that Kansas area and you couldn't make a living practicing law and you couldn't make a living farming or anything else apparently and so some of the people there had picked somebody to go find a place where they can move to. He came out this way on a train, he finally ended up in Ventura because that was the end of the line, he couldn't go farther. That was, that's right. That's <laughs> so he got to Ventura and he said, this is a pretty good place. He went back and told him, let's go to Ventura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there were about three or four families got on a, got a coach and a baggage car yeah. and put everything they had in it and came here. Came here. Well, Bill, where did he build? Where was the first home? First home was down in Ventura. I guess they rented a house and, yeah. and rented an office and set up their law office. Put out a shingle. And they, he and Barnes were together in Kansas and they came out here and started practicing law. Now he built a home. Then he went up the avenue mm -hmm. when he what was then the Alora Tract. He bought that. How he did it, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> he got the Alora Tract, yeah. which had been subdivided. If you've seen the pictures of there, but little 20 foot lots all over that place. And um, they bought that. Nobody wanted to buy it, so that it was available, so they bought it. And then they built a house. And the house is, you've seen the house, it's still, it's still there. Yeah. It, it's been moved from a different location. But yeah. And still there's still there. Selby's in that house, right? Yeah. My grandsons are, have decided to go back and rehabilitate the old house. They've torn out the, some of the old parts that are falling to pieces. And, done a lot of work on it. It's going to be quite livable when they get through. Now, Bill, not all your family were lawyers. Some of them were farmers, weren't they? All of them were farmers, mm -hmm. except for my grandfather yeah. and then my father. And they farmed, uh, they, they farmed the avenue there? They farmed in the avenue. What else? And then John went up in the uh, Santa Ana up off Coyote Creek and Santa Ana Creek, and he farmed up there all, the, all his life. Mm -hmm. And then they acquired some more land over on the, the Casitas Creek, and so they had quite a little acreage in there, and they were buying cattle and farming, and that was what they were up to. Bill, what's the first thing you remember? as a boy in Ventura. Well, we lived over here right on Mita and Ash. Yeah. And apparently my parents built their house there shortly after they were married. That uh, they took me there. I was born up in the hospital up on the hill here. Oh yeah. Oh. They took me down there and when I got big enough to get outside uh, there was a dirt street out in front with a car track down the middle. That's where the horse car ran. And it ran from the r railroad station up there and I don't know whether it went up California Street or one of the other streets. It went up to Main Street and then went west to the avenue and up the avenue to the city limits. So I was always quite interested in that. That's what you watch. We, I, I guess we got ahead of our story here, but how about your folks? How did they meet and how did they uh, well, my, start? My father 
uh, like his father, went to Michigan for, to law school. After he went to high school here in Ventura, then he went back and went to law school in Michigan. And he came back and started in as a lawyer. He was then elected district attorney long about 1900. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother, who had lived in uh, Santa Barbara County, was teaching school in the Avenue School. And the young lawyer and the school teacher got acquainted. Now, I don't know if what the, <laughs> the rest of it. They didn't tell me about it. You don't have to know anymore now, do you? <laughs> she lived up the other end, and it was quite a trip. When she'd go home, they'd go up over the Casitas Pass sometimes. Yeah. But sometimes she could go up the uh, beach. If you got low tides, you could make it through with a horse and buggy. She can go up the beach sometimes. And so they'd do that. Now, Bill, I don't think any of your schooling was in Ventura, but you said your brother went to Plaza School, I think. My brother went to the Plaza School for two years. You see, my father finished his term as district attorney a year or so after I was born. And then nobody could make a living in Ventura at that time, and the old lawyers had the, all the business tied up. So he went down to Los Angeles and finally set up a business down there with a man by the name of Hyatt. And they, we went, went he got some land out in Rivera. And I had part of it, and he had part of it, and they built a house out there. And he would get on the PE and go to his office in Los Angeles. An old streetcar. It was the interurban, the red car. Yeah, the streetcar was the yellow car. That's right. That's <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Well, you lived there then for. Uh, well, you went to school there then, didn't you? I went to school. At, mm -hmm. The Rivera Grammar School, mm -hmm. but it had two rooms, big school. Now, what what was your dad's uh, big case down there? He was quite an attorney. Oh, he did. I don't know what his big case. He never told me. You don't talk about your client's business, you know. <laughs> okay. Was was he instrumental in getting anything going down there? Well, he finally he. Uh, represented a fellow that had a chain of grocery stores, Sam Seelig, and then they sold out those stores. Uh, Sam left the business and there, there was a group of them. Some of them were Ventura people who were in that. Mm -hmm. And they were and then they decided that they didn't want to use that name any longer. So a fellow by the name of Ed Dale thought up a name, and he says, let's call it Safeway. So that started the Safeway stuff. That was the start of Safeway. And then they acquired, came along and acquired a lot more and more stores, and they've grown rather considerably. Bill, do you remember the first car your dad had? Yeah. It was a beautiful thing, an EMF. An EMF. And it had nice brass headlights and uh, a brass gadget over here that you put some water in and it made some gas and then you light the lamps and it was a beautiful thing. Had the brass all over the head, windshield. And of course, no front doors to it, you know. Yeah. And you shift gears, and it was right-hand drive. Yeah, yeah, a lot of right-hand drives, I'll say. They were all, almost all of them were right-hand drives, and so somewhere between 1900 and 1910, they decided to go to the left. Go to the left. 
We're visiting with Bill Selby. Bill, we're, we're talking about old cars, and I wondered if you'd like to recall that trip that you were telling me about, your dad bringing the family up to Ventura one day. Well, one day, that was not an unusual trip. You mean when we lived in Rivera? When you lived in Rivera. Well, you get up early in the morning, you get in the old vehicle, you had paved roads after you got to them. We, we lived on an unpaved road. But then you finally get onto a paved road and through the city and out to Hollywood. That was all paved, you know, fine going. Then when you went up through the pass out of Hollywood, you ran out of pavement. And from there on, you're on your own. <laughs> if the weather was good, it was all right, or if they, they had graders that went along smooth the road down there, and sprinkling wagons. And long about noon, you'd get to Calabasas. Yeah, a little grade there. Well, there was a store there and a well. So you go over and get some water out of the well and put the water in your radiator and uh, you drink the water. It probably wasn't drinkable, but you drink it anyway. <laughs> and the store, you could buy some food if you needed it. Then you'd start out and it was quite rugged right after that. One day I remember we got in the rain, it took us a long time to get through there. Then you finally get to the old Conejo grade, it was quite a different thing from what it is now. It wound around, went clear around to the uh, north. North side there, yeah. Yeah, it went way down, then you come out quite different from now. Yeah. And along in the late afternoon, you make it to Ventura. Yeah. It's quite a long trip. No, oh, full eight hours, wasn't there? Yeah. Ten, even? Eight or ten. Yeah. And, if had, and you usually would have to fix at least one puncture, yeah. which would kind of delay things. You know, the time you took the tire off and pulled the tube out, and then you had a little gadget you put onto it and, and put a patch on it. And you light the thing, and the patch would seal itself, and then you pump it up and go on your way. There you go. Bill, where'd you go to law school? Um, Berkeley. Berkeley. Bold Hall, University of California. That was, uh, you, you, you lived by yourself, or how, how did you manage that one? Well, I had been, I went to undergraduate at the, and I lived in a fraternity house. Mm -hmm. And then after I finished, after that, uh, my undergraduate time, after I graduated from the normal uh, undergraduate school and got a BA degree. Mm -hmm. Then I moved out of the house and well, I lived with other people, law school friends of mine. Yeah. And finally I found out I could go back and I think the last semester I lived in the fraternity house again. Yeah. Because it needs you to get your food. <laughs> they got it for you there, didn't they? Yeah. That really <laughs> Well, Bill, you had a quite a trip uh, from L.A. to Berkeley there once in a Model T. You want to tell about that one? You mean the time we started out uh, and we went up uh, on the old uh, Ridge Road? It, it was went much higher than it goes now. We went up there and we. Uh, it lost a bearing. It's a Model T. Model T. Model T. So we went in, there's a fellow, a little garage up there, and went in there, and the fellow bought us a new bearing. That got us over the top of the hill and got us through Bakersfield, <coughs> out to the next town beyond Bakersfield, and the bearing went out again. <laughs> so we had that fixed. Same process, you just pour a new babbit in the thing. And so we got started again. Finally got up uh, just this side of the hills in Oakland and it went out again. 
And that was, I think, what you're reaching for is the story I told you of uh, a friend of mine had a house out there, a summer house, so we went up there and moved in on that. But the engine was knocking pretty bad because of this bad bearing. So the next morning, we spent the night in there. Next morning we got up and took the bearing off and we couldn't pour a new bearing. We had nothing to work with. But we finally got some bacon rind and stuffed in there and squeezed the uh, thing together. We made it to Berkeley. <laughs> so it worked all right. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Well, what was your first job, Bill, when you got out of law school? I looked around. And it wasn't like it is now where they stand in line trying to get these new lawyers yeah. off from about four or $5,000 a week or something that way to pay. Nobody wanted me. I got a job with Bank of America in their trust department. Yeah. And after about six weeks, the manager says, you know, I don't think you like this work. And I said, I don't. <laughs> he said, don't you think we ought to just end our work? And I said, yes. So that was my first one. <laughs> that was the end of the first one. <laughs> How'd you do on your second one? Oh, I just found a place where I could hang out a shingle. And oh. oh, you had opened your own office then? Well, it was kind of a back room of another fellow's office. Yeah. And I did the best I could. Finally, a friend of mine who happened to have some oil wells came down. He needed some things done. One of my college friends. So I did a lot of work for them, and I was getting along pretty well. I picked up a few other yeah. clients. And yeah. Then uh, they got in some work. The, uh, Safeway, was, my father was still in the Safeway business, and they were buying out other chains and building up the thing. It was growing quite rapidly and they needed a lawyer, so I was doing a lot of that work. And then I got a call from the head of the legal department up in Oakland. He said, come out of here and go to work for us. And I said, gee, that's fine. You get a salary. So I went up there and went to work. <laughs> we can eat again, right? <laughs> so, that, well, now you, you had a secretary there too then at that time. When I got to Oakland. When you got to Oakland, yeah. You got a salary and a secretary. That went on for a couple of years. How did that, uh, how did that work out? Well, finally, long... Um, about 1931, they wanted to send me to Kansas City because they were extending all over there and they had, there was a lot of work to be done. Yeah. So I went back to Kansas City and looked over the thing. There was another fellow there, they were going to fire him, and that's why they sent me back. So I went there and looked over at the job, and then I came back to Oakland. Then they said, well, about 1st of March, you're supposed to go to Kansas City. So about that time, I decided I didn't want to go alone. So this girl that I had been working with, I said, let's get together. So we went out and hired a preacher and invited our friends down to the church and got married. <laughs> Honeymoon in Kansas City, right? Oh, we got in an automobile and headed for Kansas City. It took us a week or ten days to get there. That's great. Now, Bill, you worked in the DA's department here in Ventura, too. Well, I'd been working for Safeway then for several years yeah. in Kansas City, and they sent me back to Los Angeles. And finally, I was invited to come up here by Al Barnes. He said, uh, he had been just been elected district attorney. He hadn't gone to work yet. And he said, "Will you come up and be my chief deputy?" 
As chief deputy, it was an important job. I had one other man in the office. You had one man under. <laughs> I had a man under. Me. <laughs> so, so I, I'd never been a prosecutor. I never dreamed of it. Yeah. But it was very interesting, and we were also county council too. So we had to work both sides. Well, we had to advise all of the schools, all of the yeah. public offices. We'd write opinion a week or as to what they could do. It was quite a, a very interesting job. Do you remember any specific case comes to mind on that no. during those times? No, I. That's a long time ago. Wasn't a lot of them. And, yeah. See, that was in '35 that I came here. We have your picture that we're going to show. It uh, shows all the district attorneys that were uh, around you about that time. You showed me that picture. That yeah. They started out with Ed Henderson. Yeah. And then Jim Hollingsworth followed him. Jim was in the office, I think, for two terms. Then Al Barnes. Then I succeeded Al Barnes when he left the office. Yeah. And then there's three more in that picture that yeah. followed it us. Came later on. Yeah. yeah. Bill, what's your big hobby these days? What do you do? That's just hard to say. You're, you're, you're hesitating here like you don't want to talk about your golf game. Well, my golf game is not such as anybody would boast about. <laughs> I played golf today and in the last three or four holes I was hitting the ball quite well. Yeah, pretty good. But uh, I had a few holes in there I didn't want to discuss with anybody. <laughs> And uh, one of the fellows playing with us had his best game that I've ever seen him play. Yeah, that's awful when, when you run up to He was it. playing a good game. My wife was playing a good game. One of the things that you used to do, you used to fish a great deal. You used to be on the ocean here. Yeah, we used to go fishing. And you were telling me about trout streams in this county. Yeah, you could go fishing up the Coyote Creek and even the Ventura River had trout in it. And I think what you're fishing for is the story I told you about catching a, a steelhead. A steelhead, yeah. You can, the statute of limitations will allow you about 30 seconds on that story. Okay? Well, we were camping up there along the Coyote Creek and we saw this big steelhead. It was about uh, it's six feet long, but probably actually about two and a half feet long. <laughs> and it was landlocked. And it would go back and forth, and we tried every bait in the world to get it, and it wouldn't take it. So we kind of got it over in the shallows and threw it out on the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a picture? No pictures, no, no. I didn't own a camera. No. <laughs> well, Bill, you're looking great, and I appreciate your stories. It's been fun. Give your wife my best, and let's get that golf game better. Get, get a little, oh, show yeah. a little improvement on I, that. I'm going up and play a big tournament day after tomorrow. <laughs> okay, good. We've been visiting with Bill Selby. We'll see you next week. Come back.